And that was Lakeria Tamba helping you get fit this morning. It was all about cardio, cardio, cardio. Are you working up a sweat? Well, while you get yourself something to wipe it off or just take some water, how about we get into Kickstarter? Now, we're going back to events from last week that later have been that have spilled over into this week. Last week, Parliament came under heavy criticism after MPs quietly allocated themselves about 10 billion Uganda shillings, even after cutting the health budget five, by 5 billion to come up with that figure. Now, the speaker explained that MPs are busy on advocacy and are following up on what is happening in hospitals around the country. However, how this exact work uh, was being paid hand handsomely to do was also a question. Now, last week, through all that we saw on social media, everyone coming out to say, how can our members of parliament be thinking of themselves at this point in time? Because that 10 billion, if you divide it, would have each member of parliament getting about 22 million thereabout to help in this COVID-19 fight. Now, yesterday, the Ntunga Municipality Member of Parliament, Jared Karuhanga, and his Eruti South counterpart, that is Jonathan Odur, had they petitioned the civil division of the High Court seeking a permanent injunction to stop the allocation of that 10 billion shillings to Parliament. Through their lawyers, the MPs claim parliamentary rules of procedure were flouted in allocating this money to the Parliamentary Commission. Let's take a look. The petition was received by the Deputy Registrar of the Civil Division of the High Court, Sar Langa. The MPs claim that the legislators overstepped their mandate in allocating 10 billion shillings out of the supplementary budget to fight COVID-19 for their personal benefit. Uh, we, we think court should uh, um, stop this, put a permanent injunction, and it should not happen. And it um, should also be a lesson, a message to the nation. So whatever is being done here is for and on behalf of Ugandans who feel aggrieved. And I think it's the work of court where conflicts are between the executive or uh, the legislator. The courts have the capacity to make an inquiry and then pronounce themselves. In their petition, these two MPs claim that the 10 billion was neither part of the supplementary budget nor the budget committee report. And therefore, the House abused its own rules of procedure by appropriating it to the Parliamentary Commission. A budget is a, a very important tool for management of the country. No one person, especially the chairperson of the committee, can stand up and say, I have decided to amend when members of the committee are not aware. When we attempted to raise this matter that there's something wrong is happening, we were given no opportunity to explain ourselves. Well, it, it, was, it, it was really disheartening. The 10 billion is part of the 932 billion shillings supplementary budget passed by Parliament on 7th April. Out of this, 304 billion shillings is for mitigating the effects of COVID-19, with Ministry of Health allocated 104 billion, security 77 billion, relief and disaster preparedness 59 billion, local government 36 billion, ICT 6 billion and KCCA 2 billion shillings. Despite their petition, the majority of MPs have justified why they deserve this money. That academic discussion can go on, but I am looking for supply, I am looking for money wherever I can get from to feed the people who are starving and are dying in their houses. They are doing a lot of sending mobile money, repairing ambulances, fueling ambulances, paying drivers, and these ambulances are running. So members of parliament, and actually 20 million, most members of parliament are even adding. For collective responsibility, I will not take back the money. However, I want to put security on notice that I'm going to distribute food out of the 20 million shillings. When I get it, I'll sit and see what to do with the workers. Because they are also human beings. They didn't give food for a cluster and say the workers come and get it. However, as of today, this money is yet to hit the MP's accounts. Hubbard Ziwa, NTV at Parliament. Well, as you have heard from some members of Parliament, they think it was justified for them to receive that money. They say they are going to distribute food. To them, it was okay. But to two members of Parliament who you have seen in that story, we have one of them in studio with us this morning. That is the Ntungamu mem Member of Parliament, Gerard Karuhanga. Good morning and welcome to Morning at NTV. Good morning, Rita. Now, we'll start off with... You mentioning the fact, even in the story, 
the fact that some procedures were breached in making sure that this was passed. One of them is that it was sneaked. How it was, we don't understand. Because for a number of people, how can over 400 members of parliament miss this amount of money getting into that budget? So let's start from the breach of procedure in the, our house. Uh, firstly, um, Rita, if you were a member of parliament and uh, you had introduced yourself, so you would be like, I'm Rita Kanya, a representative of the people of Chisoro. Of the people of Chisoro. So precisely we are representatives of the people, not the area, the people. So it was very unbelievable, inconceivable, that on the floor of parliament, the chairman of the budget committee, the committee that uh, I belong to, stands up and says that I've gotten new information. Before I can present uh, this report, I would like to make an amendment to the original report. And I'm saying, wait a minute. Who amends a report of a committee of parliament on the floor of parliament precisely by, by oneself? So, uh, and indeed, uh, 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 our colleague uh, Jonathan, Honorable Jonathan Adunu, raises it and says, I think this may raise some legal challenges. Is fundamentally uh, something wrong with what we are doing? Is, is certainly not given attention. And, um, and, and, and we go on. So eventually, the 10 billion was proposed, cut from the Ministry of Health budget, which was uh, uh, 104 billion, and reduced to 94 billion. Remember that day we passed over 937 billion supplementary budget. But we chose, Parliament chose, quite hard to believe, but this is what happened. Parliament chose to go for the health budget. In these times, to allocate itself 10 billion shillings. As you mentioned that, for w what does that reveal about our leaders? At a point in time where the crisis is to do with health, COVID-19 is the fight. If you have over 100 million, which of course some will say is not enough, and we are asking people to even give money to the government, and we see that they're taking off 10 billion to give members of parliament to buy things like ambulances, which could be bought by the Ministry of Health. What does that show about our leadership? You know, um, I've already thought that leadership is about sacrifice, is about serving others, is about putting the public interest before your own interests. Uh, and I believe so, and I still believe so. I, I think the, the, this can't be played around with as long as you're a leader. Uh, unfortunately, the practice and the trend uh, in, in our general public, it's not just parliament, but generally in the politics of our country, it appears that the leaders um, are basically, it's, it's just the opposite. The like leaders put themselves before a, a anything else. And, and this can even be, you we can tell. I mean, you, ca you can read, you see other countries. I saw in Ghana, here, Kenya. Uh, people, leaders, are sacrificing, making contributions to their own uh, uh, national budgets for purposes of fighting uh, this pandemic, corona. So um, ours is, is, is a very disturbing case. And, um, but we must challenge it. We can't just sit there and, and say, oh, um, so there's this whole debate of um, people needing food. Which I was just about to get to because yes. one of the members of parliament uh, recently told the media that, you see, my people come to me. Every single day someone in these times is asking me for food. They're lining up at my house. And I don't know, for you as a member, of, of you're representing people from Ntungamu. Have you received calls? You're here in Kampala, but are you receiving calls? Are they asking you to give them money? What are you getting from your people? The fact is the calls are quite many. There were many anyway, even before now, there are, there are much more. There, 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 are quite, there, are, there are quite many calls for, for assistance, for interventions. But if you have to build a nation and get it running and, and run at a, at, at a speed that you would want to, to see a developing country like ours, that really, really needs a lot of, of effort to, to pick up and run faster, you would want to empower institutions. You would want to say, look, we have a district. 
There is this 20 million shillings we are sending to every constituents. And each member of parliament has a responsibility to make sure this money goes directly to helping out the people in his or her constituency. It's run through the institutions, it's taken care of very well, there is accountability, and, 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 there is, and, and then we play our oversight role. So we, we literally want to be um, uh, the, 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 the initiators, the, the enforcers, and, and, then the and then we play the oversight role, and then we come to say we want to see whether we are counted for the... No, 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 no. Mm. honestly, we must uh, make sure that we, we empower institutions, and, and, and so, so it's, 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 so it's not about uh, um, not wanting to reach out, not wanting to, uh, uh, to help. We really need to help our people. These are very tough times. How I actually pray that government could find every reason to take care, to pick the bill, for instance, of water for the next three months. And I know that is possible because in any case, water, uh, apart from uh, uh, the treatment bit, is basically we have it here. Mm. So it's manageable. So we need to find ways. But we have to, we have to, to entrust our institutions. We have, we have to work through them. Yes. That's why we have them. Well, yeah. now speaking of institutions, yeah. you and Jonathan Odur, Honorable Jonathan Odur, have decided to go to the justice bit of things mm -hmm. when you yesterday decided to file a petition that the civil division of the High Court seeking a permanent injunction to stop the allocation of this 10 billion shillings. First of all, for a number of Ugandans, they knew that that money had already hit the accounts of members of parliament, which is not so. And it still hasn't as of right now, as of this morning. How will this petition work? What do you hope to see come out of it? Firstly, um, we hope the, the judiciary will find this matter very urgent um, because it is certainly indeed urgent. Um, we want this payment stopped. So we hope that uh, we can get an order to stop the payment. But we also hope that they can declare null and void um, the entire process uh, uh, because it violated our rules, it broke the law. Are there parts of the law that you're looking at in particular? Yes, in our rules of procedure. The rules of procedure uh, of any uh, legislature are not just rules. Uh, in most cases, they emanate from the constitution, and so is the case of Uganda. So you don't just take them so lightly. So the rules demand that if the Minister of Finance presents a financial proposal in Parliament, that proposal is referred to the Budget Committee. And the Budget Committee scrutinizes, examines the figures of the entire proposal and presents a report to the entire House. Now, on this particular 10 billion, that was never done. The, the chairman literally sneaked in, I could actually say he smuggled in, on the floor of parliament, 10 billion shillings, and was done. So when I stood up to present the minority report, I said, Madam Speaker, before I can proceed, I would like to make it clear that as the members, and who are, it wasn't just me with a minority report, who are five members, with Honorable uh, Winnie Chiza, uh, Honorable Mwanga Chifumbi, Honorable Sisiyo Gwara, and Honorable Ati Mongom. And we said, look, I said, before we begin, we would like to dissociate ourselves in a very unequivocal way that we are completely not related to this amendment the chairman has just presented because it has, we've just seen it. It was the first time we we're hearing about it on the floor of parliament, yet we are members of the budget committee. Mm. So um, uh, I, I, that tells you how far we can go uh, if, if where, when, where money appears. Uh, it appears that money, um, and, and, and I think it is beginning to be a disease in our country. Uh, when money um, shows up, we are scattered. That's very, very true. Yes. Is it only in Uganda or all over the world? The greed. I, I, I think, uh, I, I want to say it, it, it could be uh, largely over the place, but I think we are taking it to another level. Yes. And we, unless we check ourselves, we are, we are in trouble. Yes. We need to check ourselves. Now, as of today, yesterday there was a bit of a halt in the petition. But what do you expect today? Uh, we hope um, that we'll find a, a judicial officer that will give attention, uh, urgent attention to our case. Uh, and we hope that it will be heard uh, impartially and uh, with the, the highest uh, degree of objectivity.
that it deserves. Well, we'll wait to see what comes out of there. Having been joined by Ntungamu Municipality Member of Parliament, who is also a part of the Budget Committee in the Parliament of Uganda, Honorable Jared Karuhanga, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you and good morning. Good again. morning. Well, we're now going to take a short break and we'll be coming back with a press review. You're watching Morning at NTV.